We often hear that the Canadian healthcare system sucks, right? Especially now during COVID. Waiting lists for surgeries are over a year long. In the US you pay for it, but it gets things done instantly. Well, here's my story. After getting a diagnosis for hiatal hernia, I was on the waiting list for a telephone consultation with a specialist for a month down the road. Long weekend. Eating became more and more difficult. Cramps would develop minutes after food taken, followed by stomach pain lasting up to four hours. The situation would not improve. Admission to Groves Hospitals Emerge in Fergus, Ontario. I was lucky. My family doctor, Nori, was on shift. He knew my medical history and promised to t make arrangements with specialists in the area. I was admitted and put on a zero diet overnight. A hose was put through my left nostril in an angle down to my tummy, which was very uncomfortable, but relieved some of pressure. I felt so sorry for myself. Dr. Nori had arranged a bed and a slot in the surgery schedule at St. Mary's in Kitchener. A patient transfer service would pick me up in a wheelchair, drive me to KW and roll me right into room 114, which I shared with three other patients. Brittany was my nurse who welcomed me, took my vitals and hooked me up to the IV. And she made sure I knew I could roam around the hallways to get a little exercise. After three days without any food whatsoever, I walked quite slowly. Newspapers and puzzles were offered to patients. Ruth came by and asked me if I felt like a nice shower. She briefed me on the technicalities and provided new slippers, pajama pants and a fresh gown. What a service, I thought to myself. Sandeep was my night nurse and she told me about her joy for soccer to take my mind of my worries. Matt, the assistant surgeon, came to my bed confirming that I was scheduled for within 24 hours, depending on how the existing workload would progress. Meanwhile, I'd be prepped for the procedure with blood work, stable vitals and necessary medications. While roaming the hallways, peeking into other rooms, admin office, nurse stations, I noticed a calming professionalism. No yelling, no egos, all functions from shift changes, food and cleaning services, medical applications and patient transports seemed to go hand in hand. They were almost floating. Later that day, Dr. Kilmurray would come introduce himself sharing that he would be assisting Dr. Medani, the lead surgeon, for my operation. He explained how they planned to pull the parts of my stomach back through the diaphragm and stitch it around the esophagus. Their timetable would call for late afternoon next day. How considerate and professional. Today is the day. Morning shower and roaming the hallways. Student Kayla was only on her third day, but already communicated like a pro. Very assuring. One last walk and a visit to the beautiful hospital chapel. Wall emblems would illustrate Jesus dying on the cross. Looking at the images, I found some peace with my situation. It was not that bad after all. A feeling of gratitude and safety would overcome me. And what did I know? Ahead of schedule. I was prepped and entered the operating room, which looked like a futuristic high-tech hall with lights, computers, monitors for robot-assisted surgery. When I was asked to breathe deeply under the oxygen masks, my lights went out. Seemingly a minute later, I found myself in the recovery room, being pampered by a staff of three, confirming that all went well and Dr. Madani had already talked to my wife Nicole. What happened in that one minute was a three and a half hour surgery where five tubes would be inserted into my belly. They were equipped with miniature cameras, robotic arms and assisting lights. No less than one third of my tummy, which had squeezed through the diaphragm, 
was pulled back and then wrapped around the end of the esophagus and stitched up. I now was one of the 15,000 patients St. Mary's helps per year. Vu, a young and very professional nurse, would hook me up to post-surgery IV and make sure I'd be comfortable in my 12-position electronic recovery bed. Not much sleep that night because a catheter had to be laid to empty my bladder. What an uncomfortable experience. Next morning, the hospital nutritionist, Amy, would provide me with a full post-surgery food guide and took me professionally through both choice and preparation. Nurse Jeffrey provided me with helpful information of how to lower my post-surgery discomfort. And guests who came see me at 6 a.m., Dr. Madani himself. It was Sunday morning and he had just finished an emergency surgery. He looked at me, his work, and asked me if I wanted to go home that day or rather stay for another day. He thought I was good to go. That's what I did. Nicole would pick me up with the biggest smile and a loving hug before taking me home through our beautiful countryside. It was Sunday, the sun was shining, and tears of joy rolled down my cheeks. Later that day, I couldn't resist to find out what such a procedure would have cost in the US. The Mayo Clinic displayed between 40 and 56 thousand US dollars and I didn't even have to pay for the transfer between hospitals. A closed donation to St. Mary's Hospital comes from the bottom of my heart. Thank you Canadian health care system. Thank you St. Mary's. Thank you life.